If you recall yesterday's devotion, Pastor Bartlett discussed three ways pride manifests itself. A haughty spirit, vanity, and self-protection. This morning, he will look at three others. Unapproachable pride. The individual with this type of pride disdains correction. He or she experiences extreme disgust whenever they are admonished about areas in their lives that need to be changed. In Proverbs 9, 7-9, Solomon writes, Anyone who rebukes a mocker will get an insult in return. Anyone who corrects the wicked will get hurt. So don't bother correcting mockers. They will only hate you. But correct the wise, and they will love you. Instruct the wise, and they will be even wiser. Teach the righteous, and they will learn even more. New Living Translation. The unfortunate thing about this form of pride is that it severely retards the Holy Spirit's efforts to transform the nature and character of the person in whom it is found. This is because God tends to be very confrontational in his dealings with those whom he loves. God will not allow one whom he loves to sin successfully. Confrontation of sin by a godly person preaching or teaching the unadulterated word of God or personally addressing an individual is one of the most effective methods the Lord uses to bring about changes in the life of his people. Unless we are confronted with the truth about our sinful condition, many of us will not be brought to a place of repentance. The Christian who is too proud to receive reproof makes it virtually impossible for the will of God to be done in their life and consequently they will never be brought to a state of maturity. As Solomon said in Proverbs 17.10, a single rebuke does more for a person of understanding than a hundred lashes on the back of a fool. New Living Translation. Know it all pride. The persons who have this form of pride are usually very talented, gifted, and knowledgeable. They think that there is little that they cannot accomplish. And in many ways, this is indeed the case. They therefore believe that nobody is quite as knowledgeable and capable as they are. They tend to think that they have everything to teach others, but nothing to learn from them. This is one of the reasons why the know-it-all individual is always of the view that he or she could do a better job than the person who leads them. This arrogant attitude is a forerunner of rebellion. The word of God warns us about the dangers of high-mindedness. Proverbs 26, 12. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. Isaiah 5:21. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. 1 Corinthians 1, 19-20 For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? 
Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? Rebellion. Rebellion may be defined as the refusal to come under the authority of someone who is above you. In biblical terms, it almost always refers to a human being revolting against God and or his representative. A rebel is someone who revolts against God and his government, including his or her God-ordained leader, in order to become his or her own boss. Pride manifested as rebellion is not something new. It is one of the most basic and fundamental of sins. Satan was the first to commit it when he rebelled against God in heaven and was cast out from God's presence. He is the motivating force behind all rebellion. When we begin to entertain rebellious thoughts, a warning bell should sound in our spirit. In 1 Samuel 15, 22 to 23, we read the following. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. In this passage, the prophet Samuel revealed to King Saul that the sins of rebellion and stubbornness or arrogance controlled his heart. Rebellion and stubbornness are serious sins. Both sins are evidences of a heart that has rejected the word of the Lord. They involve far more than being independent and strong-minded. Scripture equates them with witchcraft and idolatry. Sins worthy of death death according to Old Testament law. Samuel's statement was a profound one and indicates how intimately God is acquainted with the human heart. For the night before he was killed, Saul would actually resort to witchcraft. Rebellion is perhaps the most serious sin of all because as long as persons rebel, he or she closes the door to forgiveness and restoration with God. As Andrew Murray said, pride must die in you or nothing of heaven can live in you. As we reflect on these symptoms of pride, we pray like David did. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Until next time, think on these things.